In today's aquarium industry, a sump is thought of as a type of aquarium filter. Many hobbyists use sumps for filtration. However, a sump and a filter are two different pieces of equipment. A filter is a single piece of equipment capable of only a single process, filtration. The housings and workings of a filter limit its function. A sump is a receptacle for drain water and provides a housing for equipment that processes the water and services the aquarium. In this video, we'll look at how a sump works, its impact on overflow and backflow, and how to minimize the risk of using an open sump for your aquariums. And finally, we'll talk about additional uses for your sump besides filtration. The dictionary's definition of a sump is a low-lying place like a pit or reservoir that serves as a drain or receptacle for liquids. An aquarium sump then is a low-lying container acting as a reservoir where water from the main tank is processed and then returned to the main tank. A good example of a closed sump is this Cascade Model 1500 canister filter. I removed the filter baskets to show you why this is classified as a sump. Water moves from the main tank by use of gravity and feeds the container. The water then is processed, in this case through filter media, and is returned to the tank. This is a closed sump, and these are designed to meet specific needs. This one is filterization, but ones like my Sun Sun canister filter also has UV sterilization. There are many different types of closed sumps. An open sump operates on the same principle, acting as a receptacle for the downward flow of water, processing the water and then returning it. An open sump uses a second tank and this has a number of advantages. One important advantage to an open sump is that the different processes can occur within the sump. Water is heated at the same time it passes through the filter. It is also scalable, allowing you to add equipment such as chillers, or a calcium reactor, and you can use an open sump for several aquariums. I have two 20 gallon aquariums. The top tank acts as a display aquarium and the bottom acts as a sump. To get the water from the display tank to the sump, we use a standpipe. There are several different ways to get the water from the display tank to the sump such as a hang on the back overflow or an overflow box. Some methods require drilling. Whatever method you use, the principle remains the same, using gravity to get the water from the upper tank to the lower tank. A standpipe is a vertical pipe that limits the height of the water. If the water goes over a specific height, the standpipe automatically transfers the excess water to the sump. I drilled a hole in the upper tank and inserted a threaded bulkhead. I attached a 1 inch PVC pipe to the bulkhead. I extended the pipe below the tank and into the sump. I then filled the upper tank with water. When the water level reaches the height of the standpipe, any overflow moves into the pipe and down into the sump. Now the water in the sump is processed and ready to go back to the display tank. We placed a pump in the sump and ran a hose from the output of the sump up into the upper tank. Now this is a basic sump. Let's look at the risks and advantages of an open sump for your aquarium. This plastic bag simulates debris clogging the drain pipe. Water is no longer leaving the display tank through the pipe. The sump, though, continues to pump water into your display tank. The display tank then overflows and ruins the floor. Of course, removing the debris resolves the issue. But there are other options that to prevent this type of occurrence when using a sump, such as multiple drains and the installation of an overflow box. We'll talk more about risk and prevention of risk in an upcoming video on sumps. If the power goes out, water is no longer pumped into the upper display tank. Instead, the water is siphoned from the display tank down into the sump. This is gravity's fault. 
The pump no longer pushes water upwards, so the water flows downwards back into the sump. If left uncorrected, this backflow will cause the sump to overflow. Check valves and proper pump sizing reduce this risk. A sump is a good place to store unsightly equipment. Heaters, skimmers, and pumps can run from the sump, allowing the main tank to be free of technology. You can do water changes and top-offs without disturbing the livestock in your main display tank. The sump also aids in dosing. This can apply to medications, fertilizer, or when adding minerals to your tank. Any cloudiness is dispersed in the sump before reaching the display tank or tanks if you are running more than one tank off the sump. I remove some of the water to simulate evaporation. Without a sump, the water levels would drop in the display tank, which would affect your livestock. But the sump continues to pump water up to the display tank. The additional water from the sump maintains the appropriate level in the display tank. The evaporation is reflected in the tank below. You can also use the sump as a second aquarium. A sump provides multiple purpose water processing, additional storage, and room for additional stock. It also aids in maintaining multiple display tanks. Here I've shown you a basic sump and how it can be utilized. In an upcoming video, we'll build a sump to integrate into an aquatic system. We'll calculate size requirements for the sump and talk about the risks and the risk prevention when using the sump. I hope you'll join us.